important win here. 503 wins, 26 among active coaches, but seventh most among active coaches at their current institution. He could have gone different places, Dan. He has stayed here, and the people in Moraga certainly happy as we are underway. Brigham Young in the blue, St. Mary's in the home red. And they go into Triore early on. Big Foose with the jump hook. No good. And the rebound cleared by Bowen. There is going to be a heavy dose of post-ups for Triore throughout the night. St. Mary's will start Logan Johnson with Mahaney. Dukas, the great three-point shooter. Bowen, the defensive specialist. And the big man, Mitchell Saxon. Saxon going to Triori. The left is off, and George clears for the Cougars. Mark Pope will start Dallin Hall. Jackson Robinson, the three-point specialist. Spencer Johnson, Gideon George, and the center. Undersized, but bigger and stronger than most. Puseni Triori. Johnson hits the first three of the game. Three-nothing Cougars. Big shot for him. He has been playing really well as of late. He's kind of had a little bit of a nomadic career, but he's found a home in Provo. Told us pregame he put on 15 pounds, is stronger, and uh, feeling more athletic with the weight. This is Mahaney, the freshman. Johnson all the way in the clear layup. Because Logan Johnson has been able to knock down threes in previous games, it sets that up. You close him out as if he's a shooter. With his quickness, he can get direct line drive to the rim. Robinson off the mark. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with BYU. Yeah, you mentioned Johnson. He scored 31 points at LMU and 34 at Portland last week. So first Gale since Jordan Ford to go 30 or more in back-to-back -back games. There's Mark Pope, the head coach of the BYU Boogie, uh, Cougars. Fourth season in Provo, and under him, the Cougars just 4-11 and against ranked opponents, but uh, he did get his 50th victory this week, his 80th victory this season earlier in the year. Triori with the jump hook, and the Cougars going inside. That is going to be a battle all night long. Triore backing down to get to his sweet spot. Saxon... Caught an elbow in the chin that time. Good finish. Saxon has the size on Triori. Nice cut to Johnson. That's picture-perfect St. Mary's basketball. Throw the ball in the post, split-screen action, make the defense make a mistake, and you come away with a layup. Johnson off the dribble, no good. Ball comes out to Mahaney. Mahaney, the left runner's first shot's no good. Saxon puts it back. Well, if George and Chiore come over from the weak side to, to attempt a block shot, it's going to open up the backboard. Saxon, the recipient of that offensive rebound putback. Hall too strong on the layup. Another board by Saxon. Johnson draws contact. Off glass and counter. Logan Johnson likes it. This crowd likes it. He has really grown into becoming a terrific player at the college level. Grew up in the Bay Area, went to Cincinnati for a year. Wanted to come back home. He has continued to improve year after year. A terrific defender, but he's really created nightmare matchups for others because he's so slithery and slippery getting to the basket. 6 nothing run in less than a minute for the home Gale. George back into Triori. Triori spinning, jump hook over the taller. Saxon is good. Randy Bennett went over scouting report today saying he is going to spin back to that left shoulder. 
Sometimes there's nothing the defense can do about it. Johnson, the runner with the right off the window. Deflection by Saxon. Johnson for three. The tip out. Hall back to Robinson. Now Gideon George for three. Off the mark. And a foul on Triori going over the back. Pretty fast pace to start this first to the media. Eight of their ten points. You see the numbers there. Three points in the previous game against San Diego, but the two before that, back-to-back 30-point -back performances. Yeah, 31 and 34 against LMU and Portland. So far with eight tonight. BYU now in a little bit of a zone. Saxon wide open and a nice assist from Logan Johnson. Drive the gaps in the zone. Make the defense rotate. Terrific pocket pass. All 12 St. Mary's points in the paint. Triori going back. Jump hook is off. Another board by Saxon. Each possession that he has the ball in the block, his left shoulder is going directly into the chest of Mitchell Saxon. Now Bowen's first three, and that's good. Might not be the prettiest release, but it's effective. Shoots it at over 40% on the three-point line on the year. Does all the little things that allows this St. Mary's team to really go. Randy Bennett actually wants him to shoot more. Says he hesitates too much sometimes. Self-inflicted as Johnson counters for the Cougars. Steal by Johnson and then a steal by Spencer Johnson and Logan Johnson had to reach in and foul him. Spencer Johnson, one of the best in the country or excuse me, in the WCC in thefts. Almost two steals per game. Get another look at the attack of the zone. Sometimes when the zone is implemented, the offense kind of sees it as a stop sign. That not the case for Logan Johnson. Attacks, finds the big underneath. Rudy Williams, super sub for BYU. Number three is in. He had 20. Thursday and a loss to Santa Clara. Spencer Johnson. No good. Ball goes out of bounds off Saxon. Stays with the Cougars. And that's something I expect to see a decent amount tonight as well as the rest of the season against St. Mary's. Mahaney learning as a freshman how to guard and personnel. It's not that he's a bad defender, but people want to test him. Williams lobbed it up. Triori came down with it. Now Noah Waterman into the game and into the scoring book with a three. Well, he is aggressive to shoot. Transfer from Detroit Mercy. He is not shy when he gets an opportunity beyond the arc. Mahaney's first three of the game off. Rudy Williams may have given him a little push from behind. Back to Triori. Shot clock down to five. Cougars have to put something up. Johnson does and gets it. Big time shot there with the shot clock winding down. One of the emphasis points 
for St. Mary's is keep the ball out of the paint. That time Spencer Johnson got to the heart of the paint. Game of runs. St. Mary's already had a 7-0 run. BYU on a 7-0 run. And now a turnover by St. Mary's. And we will take a timeout. Number one team in the conference is St. Mary's. Around with just two weeks left. Is it possible that St. Mary's is underrated even though they're ranked 17th? I think they are. And I think a lot of the reason why is Gonzaga's gotten so much of the shine over the last 20 years in this league. But Randy Bennett has built a big-time program here. They don't play the fanciest or flashiest style, so a, a lot of fans kind of disregard what they do. But they are a tremendous basketball program. Atiki Ali Atiki, number four in for Mark Pope and the Cougars. Williams for three. Atiki with the rebound. Spencer Johnson for three, and he's got another one. He's got ten now on the evening. You have got to run him off the three-point line. He's got a quick trigger, a high release. But it starts by giving up an extra possession on the offensive glass. Atiki. And Dukas got bumped along the baseline. Augustus Marcelonis has checked in, number three, and Mahaney's getting a breather. Marcelonis has played really well as of late. Previous game against San Diego, he had 11 points. He's a guy who started 13 games a season ago. Mahaney comes in as a freshman from literally three minutes away. <laughs> it wasn't long before he moved into the starting lineup. So far, the Logan Johnson show for the Gales. Williams draw contact, no call, but the hoop is good. That's what he does. He is in attack mode the second Mark Pope calls his name to check into the game. Nineteen seventeen Cougars. Marcelonis lost his footing but drew the foul. If the name's familiar in the Bay Area, it's because his father was a big-time player for the Warriors, Sharunas Barcelonas. NBA Hall of Famer, great player for the Warriors. And as you mentioned, started early on until they said, you just can't keep Aiden Mahaney out of the starting line. And I talked to Randy Bennett earlier this season before another game that I called, and he thinks Barcelonas has the makings of being an all-league type of guard. Saxon no good. Saxon again got fouled. Gales want goaltending. Don't look like they're going to get it, but they will get the foul, and Saxon will shoot two. These two teams don't give an inch. I mean, if, if you're going to go in the paint, post up, battle for an offensive board, expect contact, expect to get hit. There is no such thing as an easy bucket in this game. First one off by Saxon, who's... First in the WCC in blocks, second in rebounds. Eight double-doubles this season, and so far already has four rebounds in this game and four points, now five. He's really developed as a player out of the Seattle area. Ingram High School in the Metro League, where there's a lot of really good players that have come out of there. But you saw it as a freshman, all freshman team. Last year he had some big moments. But this year, he's really come to play. George, tough turnaround. Here comes St. Mary. So we have 17th ranked St. Mary's and BYU. Dave Feldman, Dan Dickow. St. Mary's in first place in the WCC. A half game ahead of Gonzaga. As Marcelonis is off. Gonzaga already a winner today against Pepperdine. St. Mary's and Gonzaga will play Dan in that final game. Yeah, it should be an incredible atmosphere at the McCarthy Athletic Center. But speaking of Gonzaga, Drew Timmy with another unbelievable performance. 
today. 15 of 20 for the field, 34 points. Johnson left alone, and Marcellus found him beautifully. Marcellonis with the dime. There's a lot of bumping, Dan. This is pretty physical away from the ball. We've spotlighted and talked about it on the low post and on the glass, but even on the perimeter. Guys are bumping each cutter. As you move to go into a screening action, you're getting knocked off your line. Williams has four, had 20 off the bench against Santa Clara on Thursday. That was a loss to Santa Clara by BYU. The old man was as versatile as they were in the NBA for a long time. Augustus, the nice pass, but you got to give Logan Johnson a lot of credit. Many players will just run the floor and get to the deep corner to space, and he recognized back cut opportunity, and it was just up to Marcellonis to find him. Now Foose is going against a bigger player. Harry Wessels is 7-1, the freshman from Australia, who we were observing in warm ups, Dan. A, you pointed out correctly, he's very big. <laughs> but he's also pretty skilled. He is, I think... He is going to be the next truly good big in this program. Mitchell Saxon is very good. He's got another year. But Wessels as a freshman, you just see the size. You see the footwork. He's got great hands. He plays for the Australian national team at his age. I think the future is really bright for him. Look at that screen. Marshall Lonis, good ball movement. Back to Logan Johnson. And then Kyle Bowen commits the foul. Tight game so far in Moraga. 21-20. I like the haircut. You know who's coming next, Dan, don't you? I you have don't. an idea? <laughs> Look at the hair. Look at Dan Dickow, the WCC Player of the Year in 2002. Well, there's a little like gray that. sprinkled in now, but uh, to be good. mentioned, <laughs> to be mentioned with those names is great. I mean, Adam Morrison could have been up there with the Players of the Year. That's, qu that's quite a list you're on. It's, um, it's, it's humbling. I mean, it's pretty cool to be mentioned alongside some of those guys. I mean, Dan did play in the NBA for six years. He, it's an incredible career. And that list is it's insane. At this time, throwing your attention to the area right behind section... Dan Dickow, Jersey retirement, February 9th versus USF. Number 21 will go up in the Raptors. How special a moment was that? It was very special, you know, to be spotlighted and honored in, in that way. Have my family there with me it was special. Um, you know, I, I feel very blessed to say I, I played a small part in the big tradition of Gonzaga basketball. Uh, I, I think it was a bigger part than the small part, but... <laughs> Well, thank you. Humbleness accepted. Back here in Moraga, we got a tight game, and there's two seconds on this shot clock, and that is a bad offensive possession by the Gales. Well, BYU has been able to contain dribble penetration after that first few minutes where Logan Johnson really got going. That's fourth turnover now for St. Mary's. They've played up against the shot clock a number of times, which is normal for St. Mary's to do, but the turnovers, usually one of the best, not just in the WCC, but the country taking care of the basketball. Aiden Mahaney has checked back in. He has yet to score for Randy Bennett. George with some nice footwork. Yeah, exactly right. Good footwork. Beat me to it. Hall had it blocked. Got it back. Shot clock keeps running. Now there's seven. Hello. 
Logan Johnson looks like he may have caught a knee to the thigh or something. He was a little slow getting down the floor. Not in his normal gait of running down the floor. Wessel inside, and the big seven-foot freshman is on the board. He just made Triore look tiny right there on that catch and finish. Randy Bennett screaming for a double dribble, and David Hall agreed with him. The screen and go straight to the front of the rim. A little slow to develop, but good hands, patience, understanding. You've got the size advantage. Take your time. You're right, Dan. It's hard to make Triori look tiny. He did. Yes. <laughs> Mahaney is on the board with the runner. And he's got the ability to finish with either hand, change the cadence of his footwork, the trajectory of his release points. He's crafty in there. He had a number of good finishes down the stretch against Gonzaga in the win a couple weeks ago. Triori inside had the mismatch with Mahaney on him and will go to the free throw line after the foul. As an undersized guard, you, you have to be able to keep the defense off balance. You can do that with your handle, you can do it with the cadence of your footwork, as well as the release points of your finishes. Mahaney showed all three of those characteristics there. Hey, here's our next ACC Big 12 Monday doubleheader at 7 Eastern. Kyle Filipowski and Duke host L. Ellis and Louisville at Cameron Indoor, and then Jalen Wilson and number 5 Kansas take on number 22 TCU. We could have leading score Mike Miles back for this very important game. Both games right here on ESPN and the app. How about that Kansas Baylor game today? <laughs> wow. I didn't know if you were going to get to see that with the pregame nap and the timing. <laughs> I saw some of it too. It was pretty good. Well, There's a lot of good college yeah. basketball games Great game. today. And we get to wrap up the evening with another good one here. All the highlights will come with Kevin Connors and Sean Farnham and John Crispin coming up after about five more minutes of clock time here in Moraga. So far, this pace stand favoring BYU. Well, the early portion of the game definitely favored you, uh, BYU. I think it slowed down a little bit uh, by design by Randy Bennett. It's play, being played now at a St. Mary's tempo. Saxon has to shoot. Barely got it off, and it doesn't go. Hall, no good. And the rebound to Joshua Jefferson, who's checked in, number five. Freshman from Las Vegas. Johnson somehow switched to the right and got it. That was as unique a finish as you're going to find. He plays with a ton of pride, and you know he couldn't have been happy and pleased with the way he played against San Diego with only three points. St. Mary's squeaked out a win. He's been terrific tonight. Just like that, Dan, on cue. He missed his easiest chance he had tonight. <laughs> you're right. Heard the footsteps from the defender chasing him in transition. Uh, Tiki and Gideon George had their signals crossed and saw a turnover. It's been the Logan Johnson show. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. Sean's right. I mean, Mahaney in the games at the end as a freshman takes them over. As you look at these standings with St. Mary's a half game ahead of Gonzaga, and it'll come down if St. Mary's holds on uh, to that final game against the Zags next Saturday. That's going to be an incredible atmosphere in Spokane. Game day crew will be there. Dukas is open and buries it. But it's off of dribble penetration. You put the defense in rotation, it's an easy decision. Find an open shooter in the corner. Waterman no good, and Logan Johnson high for the rebound. Duke 
Marcus again. And BYU dodged the bullet there. A great set to get him free. Troy Triori down way low, but missed it. Lost his footing. Johnson, good pass into Jefferson and a foul down below. That's what experience does, though. Logan Johnson, maybe as a younger player, would have took off of one foot. You always hear coaches pre preach, play off of two feet, or if you don't have it, keep your dribble alive. Johnson did that. Instead of forcing a layup, he was able to find Jefferson on the cut. Jefferson's a unique player. I, I think he's got a chance to be a good player. Out of Las Vegas, Liberty High School. A team last year that actually broke a nine-year state tournament streak for Bishop Gorman. Scored the final six points of regulation before they won it in overtime. So you know he places a value on winning. And those are the kind of guys that Randy Bennett wants in his program. Seven-point lead for St. Mary's right now. Foul was on number five, Gideon George. David Hall clarifying with us. You know what I've been impressed with so far, Dan, too? Aiden Mahaney doesn't force it. You know, sometimes as a freshman, you might think, okay, I haven't scored a lot of it. He kind of lets it come to him. And that's what the good point guards do. They search out and they feel the game. And they recognize if you can score as a point guard like he does, when is my time to look for my own shot? And, you know, he's... From all accounts, he did that in high school, and now he's really learning how to do it at the college level. He's got a coach that trusts him, believes in him, and allows him to do just that. And to your point, maybe not necessary yet with Logan Johnson off to such a great start. Yep, and that's part of the IQ that he has. He understands. He's got other guys going. Spencer Johnson for BYU. 31-24, closing in on two minutes in the first half. So far, been the Johnson and Johnson show. Sexton missed it, and a nice tip on the follow. So great second effort by Mitchell Saxon. Impressive tip for sure. And Spencer Johnson for BYU. He's really been playing well as of late. We talked about it, but missed nine games earlier with an injury, and that really kind of, you know, put a damper on BYU's chances to really kind of gain some chemistry. They've started eight different starting lineups this season. Mahaney, nice steal. The Gales with their biggest lead right now, nine. Saxon against Waterman. And Saxon has it blocked by Johnson and out of bounds. There's a lot of contact. There were a lot of steps. There's a lot of things going on there. <laughs> I think the officials may have been as confused as we were with what Saxon was trying to do on the low block. A stumble, a back down, maybe a travel. <laughs> Lost the ball going up. Put it this way, that won't be on his highlights at the end of the year. <laughs> Mahaney in the corner. Foul reaching in by St. Mary's. <laughs> Only four fouls on St. Mary's, so BYU inbounding. Williams gets separation. This is a two-for-one opportunity if they go quickly. They don't have time now. That's something I wish in the college game more programs and players would understand. Two-for-one situations. Five on the clock. Mahaney's got to do something. 
He does, but blocked by Triori, and that'll end the half. Nice defense by Foose. So nine seconds left. That was a premature halftime call. <laughs> that was pretty good. Being aggressive, but he didn't think they played hard enough in that game. Well, that's something that, uh, you know, he feels that, that the program must pride itself on. They played much harder tonight. They just haven't been able to keep control of Logan Johnson. Final five seconds, and Marcellonis grabs Williams. It's a good foul. They've foul got to give. one more to give now if they want to. Yep. You just got to make sure you don't foul when a BYU player is in the shooting motion. Williams for three. Yes! And that's why you give that foul. Jefferson up top, hedging that ball screen, had an opportunity. Coach Randy Bennett asking the guys before they headed in the tunnel, why didn't you foul? <laughs> kind of got that throwback game where he's very efficient. He'll catch and shoot. One dribble pull-ups. If you're off in drop coverage in the pick and roll, he'll shoot over the top. And if he likes the size advantage, he'll take you to the low block. And with that, we are underway in the second half. And right away inside, Mitchell Saxon. And St. Mary's adds to their lead. Triori fouled. Saxon, bad position, and tried to go over the top of Triori. Oh, second foul, but that's an unnecessary foul. St. Mary's defensive philosophies are built on making you score over the top and keeping a guy in front. That time he simply reached, picked up a silly one. Logan Johnson with the 14, Spencer Johnson with the 12. Is, both have shot the ball extremely well. St. Mary's, Logan. St. Mary's has numbers if they want to take advantage of it. Aiden Mahaney, only two in the first half. Something to look at, Dan. Oh, one of five from the field. He hasn't been aggressive to score. Logan Johnson's been really good, but the ball will be in his hands plenty, especially if it's a close game. Gideon George twisting inside and drew the foul. When you look at the struggles for BYU. Three starters were scoreless in that first half. Gideon George, Jackson Robinson, and Dallin Hall, all with zero points. They've got to get production from all three of those here in the second half. They can't rely just on Spencer Johnson and then Rudy Williams off the bench. Gideon George with the nice stroke. Interesting story that, you know, he's from Nigeria and he sent 8,000 shoes, different pairs of shoes to his hometown in Nigeria, small town in Nigeria for kids that can't afford shoes. And he does this huge shoe drive. And he does it every year. He sent over 8,000 shoes. That's impressive. That's understanding that the impact that you can have because you're good at a sport. Mahaney squares up and hits it. Well, it didn't take him long. <laughs> Great job using changing of speeds and directions into that dribble handoff. Johnson finds Triori, who finds the hoop, and he'll get a foul shot. Freshman mistake, though, from Mahaney. If you're going to foul a guy as big and strong as Triori, you have to foul him where he can't get that ball up on the backboard. Almost as if it was a fly on Triori's arm, as big and strong as he is. And you got to crack him oh, harder yeah. than that. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I learned that when I was in the NBA. I mean, I kind of in weak side rotations. If I was going to foul a guy, I would absolutely have to hammer the guy. <laughs> Otherwise, don't bother picking up a silly foul. <laughs> Otherwise, he was carrying you up to the rim with him, right? Exactly right. Yeah. I had a welcome to the NBA moment my rookie year. Carl Malone. Set a back screen on me, and I think I heard every vertebrae pop. <laughs> George blocked by Dukas. Nice defense. Check that. That was Bowen with the defensive play. 
and then hustles back to close out on George. Good sequence by Bowen. We haven't talked much about defensive numbers for St. Mary's. Fifth in the country in efficiency that end of the floor. They can do that because they've got a terrific perimeter defender in Logan Johnson, and then Bowen on the interior is a terrific defender as well. Saxon with a foul on the floor on Triori. So when you have two really good defenders in different positions on the floor, you can almost take the opponent's best interior player, take the opponent's best perimeter player, and cut their normal numbers down. What a play. Beautiful, and Saxon finishes. They're worried about Mahaney on the handback. Saxon, the great recognition. Priori asks for some space. They give it to him. And somehow banks it in. Johnson, who had 14 in the first half, no. Saxon battling it. Priori late to join the team on the other half, and he finally does. Triori with a quick, quick floater. He's still checking his forehead after that last battle for a loose ball with Saxon. A three-point game here, 39-36, 17th ranked St. Mary's. If you're BYU, you've got to like the position that you're in as Mahaney gets loose. But five-point game early in the second half, three starters, as mentioned, scoreless. You just want to keep this game close, and then all the pressure falls on St. Mary's down the stretch. We mentioned early on the turnover, St. Mary's half game lead over Gonzaga. Gonzaga winner earlier today. Duke has had it stripped. Dallin Hall waits for Waterman, and Waterman knocks it down. It's a three point game. Mahaney just kept going and going till he drew the foul on Hall. And that'll take us to our first media timeout. Four. And Aiden Mahaney going to the free throw line to shoot two. And as you pointed out, Dan, second half is normally when he sort of picks it up. A good point guard steal the game out. Uh, Learn what the defense coverage is in situ situations such as pick and rolls, wide pin down screens, dribble handoffs, and then you make your adjustments accordingly in the second half. Two jumpers already in those two free throws as well. Mahaney with eight. The lead is four. Defense! Triori, tough hook over the taller Saxon. That was a tough shot. And Saxon did a good job of being vertical. Triori extends with the finish. Johnson fell to the floor, and they'll call a trip. On Richie Saunders. And they change it. The foul will be on Williams. But you mentioned Mahaney having the ball a lot in his hands. Well, you can already see the start of the second half. They've run more pick and rolls in the top of the floor for him. And he's so good and creative about changing angles, manipulating switches. 
So when he finds a crack, he's ready to make the correct read and play. BYU with a chance to take the lead here. Traore lost it, got it back. Might have been a foul. Williams lost it. Mahaney steals it. What a pass. Beautiful. Are you kidding me? Impressive. Wow. The vision, the guts, and then the skill. I mean, you got to have guts to throw that pass. Off the dribble with one hand? Williams has to shoot it. That may be one of the better assists I've ever seen. It's up there for sure this season in college basketball for me. Mahaney now feeling it. It's second half time. A timeout BYU. He plays with an edge. Program Matthew Delvadova is here tonight. It's NBA All Star break. They've had a lot of really good point guards come through this program. Patty Mills, Joe Rahan, who's also an assistant coach. Emmett Nar, Ford, Ford, Tommy Cousy now in the G League. Lead is seven. Largest lead of the game is nine by St. Mary's. Trey Stewart has checked in. That's number one with the shot that just curled out. St. Mary's ball. This is kind of that danger zone time for BYU. Player like Stewart checks in. He's not much of a scorer. You got to take good shots. That one looked a little forced to me because if St. Mary's is able to climb this into a 10, 12 point lead, it feels almost like 20. Mahaney did everything but get it to drop, but he'll go to the free throw line. He was fouled. Seems like he's getting all the way to the hoop now much easier, man, than in the first half. Well, I think they've made a concerted effort to give him more pick and rolls in the middle of the floor with spacing allowing him to operate. And they've also got shooters that you have to worry about. Logan Johnson's gotten off to a nice start in the first half, so you, you got to be concerned about him. Dukas is a tremendous shooter. You can't leave him. And when you have options around pick and roll point guards, it's a tough cover defensively. So the lead back to nine, a seven nothing jails run. This is matching their biggest lead of the game. Williams in all kinds of traffic through the foul, and he is single handedly trying to generate some offense. And he can do that. Three times this year off the bench, he scored 25 or more. That's kind of his job. Come in and be aggressive. 28 against USF, 26 against Creighton, 26 against Utah, and most recently 24 against Santa Clara. The senior from Ontario, Canada, knocks it down. Both are good. Johnson has only two in this half after 14 in the first half. And a late whistle after the shot on Gideon George. We've spotlighted just how physical it is on the glass. George gets called for the push. If you're going to call that one, though, you could call that on almost every shot attempt tonight because it is physical down there. Saxon with the left. Blocked by Atiki Ali Atiki. St. Mary's will inbound with 15 on the clock. Bowen 
with the tip. That's what he does. Bowen makes winning plays. Does so many little things that don't show up on the scoreboard. Latifi wants it, going at Saxon. Stewart short. Williams gets the offensive rebound and a new 20. Williams left alone. And a foul on St. Mary's. Fifty-two forty-three right now, and seven of his thirteen have come in the second half. Three of four from the field, and this nine-point barrier so far the largest lead of the game. And St. Mary's has had that a couple times. Johnson defended nicely by Johnson. And another Johnson and Johnson play, this time a jump ball. <laughs> that was a true Johnson and Johnson jump ball right there. I think Johnson thought it was a foul being called on him with his initial first reaction right, to the whistle. Too. But a clear jump ball, good call from the official. A lot of times officials get berated by fans, but it's such a difficult job. Split second. Decision has to be made. You're going to be wrong in one fan base's opinions, regardless of what it is. Logan Johnson's having a great game. His mom, Jennifer, comes to all these games, and she gets credit for his toughness. Jennifer's been in the Air Force for 31 years and raised five kids while serving her country. And Logan says, I'm tough and I'm resilient, and anything I have good is because of his mom, Jennifer Johnson. That's awesome. Appreciate the service to our country. Noah Waterman left alone on the baseline, converts it, and we'll get a chance for a three-point play. Waterman's unique. I don't think he's had the impact that maybe he and the coaching staff thought he'd have as a transfer from Detroit Mercy, but he can shoot it from the outside. He's skilled enough to put the ball on the deck and make plays like that. The lead now down to just two possessions, perhaps. <laughs> Wessels battling for it, but run down by Jackson Robinson. Now here comes Mahaney. Logan Johnson! Some bounce for the senior from the Bay Area. That's just a difficult shot from Williams there. You know, I understand he's a scorer. And you can put pressure on the defense, but you've got to get a better one than that, especially when you're still in this game. Johnson again. Under Mick Cronin, transferred back home to the Bay, where obviously his career has really taken off. He's taken advantage of that extra COVID year. He could have been done, right. but he decided to come back, play one more year. I know Randy Bennett was happy about that. Yeah, grew up in Mountain View, went to St. Francis. And, uh, a great local story here.
Triori against the seven-footer. And Mahaney steps in and slaps it away. When the ball is entered to the post like that, and Triori's, Triori's trying to back him down, you've got to understand when digs from the perimeter are going to come. He spun right back into Mahaney. The best post players kind of have that second sense about them of where weak side might be digging down or a double team is truly going to come from. You know, Jackson Robinson averages nine a game for BYU, hasn't scored as there's three on the clock and Waterman has to shoot it. Technical on a flop. I was watching the trajectory of the ball, so I didn't see if it was a flop or not. I'm sure we'll get a chance to look at the replay. But it'll be two that free used to throws. be a warning, and now it's just the tee. Yeah, it'll be a free throw, one free throw right. to basketball back right. to St. Mary's. Bowen may have got him up top a little bit, but Waterman kicked his leg out and then fell on the landing. Mahaney going against the taller Waterman. Gets around him, stuck in the air. Wessels comes up with it. Logan Johnson. Williams offensive foul pushing off on Mahaney. Williams tried to get an edge on the pick and roll and created the contact against Mahaney. Difficult one, but probably the correct one. You see, he's the one who went back into Mahaney there as Mahaney was trying to get back in front. with an incredible hang shot. Hanging. Another finish with his offhand. This is where it becomes so difficult to play against St. Mary's. They get a 13-point lead. They are going to play deep into the shot clock, and they're going to play pick and roll time and time again. Russell's fouling Atiki from behind. Media time. And some separation now, finally, in this under eight minutes in favor of St. Mary's. Well, they've had terrific performances in the second half from their backcourt. Logan Johnson, the old guard, and the new guard, Aiden Mahaney. BYU is going to have to find a way to speed St. Mary's up somehow, some way. Maybe force a turnover. Four shots. Make sure you come up with the rebound. Offensive tap back and Waterman hits the three. But that's a start. They need something to go their way. Four points with the free throw and then the extra bucket. It's been interesting too. No Augustus Marcellonis no. here in the second half right. for St. Mary's. Curious if slight injury we don't know about. And hold on Dallin Hall, who's trying to guard Logan Johnson. Well, both teams are shooting now in the bonus. Johnson will have a chance to add to his total. Had 14 in the first half. Well, 
has 22 on the night. The first one is good. And there's uh, Sharonis Marcellonis' son, yes. Augustus. It's one of those things where he has been playing really well. He's been in the rotation. Maybe it's a small injury we don't know of, or because Mahaney and Johnson are playing so well in the second half, just haven't wanted to take them out. Saunders with a deep three for the Cougars. Well, that's how you get back into it. Back-to-back -back threes. This is the kind of fight that Mark Pope wanted to see in that disappointing loss to Santa Clara. Ball deflected. We'll stay with St. Mary's. Johnson, good spin. Good defense from Dukas. Deny that dribble handoff. Saunters, two in a row. Wow. Didn't matter. The lead is only five. BYU on a 6 nothing run. Both Saunders threes. Great pass. Dukas couldn't finish. All kinds of contact. No call. Saxon has it and he's fouled. Richie Saunders didn't play much in that first half. He's been given a couple opportunities here in the second. He's made the most of them. Dukas a little late in his contest. Saunders elevates from deep. Mitchell Saxon at the free throw line. Has 12 points now to go with seven rebounds. So could have himself a... Ninth double double before the night's over. Has eight on the season. See if they try to go back to Saunders. Hall muscling in over Mahaney. First buck of the night for Hall. He must have saw something that he liked as that play was developing because he backed down to get to his sweet spot. Moved back to five. It was 11. Would not expect any St. Mary's shots to go up. If there's more than about eight on the shot clock each time down the rest of the way. Waterman blocks Mahaney. Johnson on the other end, no good. Gets his own rebound. Nice pass. Three to shoot. Hall doesn't realize it. Now he does. Gets it off. Wow. And he hits it. And like that, it's a two-point game, Dave. BYU has done an incredible job of just making every shot attempt difficult down the stretch. And then they've hit three big-time three-pointers.
And a foul on Waterman. So we'll take a stop in the action. 63-61. Freddie adjusted I'm, it. I'm not sure when uh, the truck adjusted the graphic on our screen. So 60 is the correct score, 63-60. Refs had a lot to sort out there. They did. <laughs> we thought they were looking at a different play. Glad that they were on top of it, explaining to us what they were really looking at. David Hall is one of the best in the business. He's going to get it right. Hall trying to tie it up. If you're BYU, you have got to get the rebound. They have done a great job the last few possessions, not giving second chance opportunities. BYU with one timeout left, St. Mary's with three. And the arrow in favor of St. Mary's. Bad pass picked off by Johnson. He waits. Dallin Hall hit the deck and wanted a foul, no call. Expect the ball every possession to end with Logan Johnson or Aiden Mahaney in a pick and roll. Three on the clock. Mahaney's got to shoot. He does. BYU with a chance to tie on this possession. Into Triori, who reverses it. Wow. Heck B of a finish. BYU within one. Yeah, that's the first time he's gone that quickly on the catch. Tremendous finish on the other side of the rim. Logan Johnson answers. Just kind of slithers his way into the paint. The right hand scoop off the glass. Dallin Hall, no good. Ball tipped away. Johnson has it. St. Mary's with the ball. A three point lead. And 105 on the clock. St. Mary's will run this down well to zero on the shot clock. You want to run as much time off the clock as you can. Randy Bennett calls timeout. Sixty-five, sixty-two. Dukas will inbound it. Both teams in the bonus. One timeout for BYU, two for St. Mary's. Now ten for Mahaney. Mahaney for three. Priori was not up at the point of the screen. Mahaney recognizes it. It's a pretty good combination, those two right there. 26 and 16. Let's see what Mark Pope drew up. I'd expect a quick pick and roll high. Saunders off the screen. No room for Saunders. 
Now Spencer Johnson, tough shot. Draws nothing. Ball goes out of bounds. St. Mary's basketball. You're St. Mary's. Go to the basketball, expect pressure, expect them to go for a steal for BYU. Go for a quick steal. If you don't get it, then you got a foul. Yep. Saxon smartly waits. Mahaney wanted to get it. He didn't. And Hall found his Johnson. And Marcellona, an 80% free throw shooters back in the game. Our ACC Big 12 Monday doubleheader, 7 Eastern, Kyle Filipowski and Duke. Host Al Ellis and Louisville at Cameron, then Jalen Wilson in number 5 Kansas, taking on number 22 TCU. You could have their leading scorer, Mike Miles, back. Both games on ESPN and the app. Logan Johnson to shoot two. First one is off. Bowen back in, Saxon out. Second one is good. It's a seven point game. Waterman had it stripped. Mahaney the other way, fouled by Hall. Marcelona sat most of the second half, but terrific anticipation to pop the ball loose. College basketball live. Coming up immediately following us. Hope to hear from some of these players. Maybe Aiden Mahaney, who's got 16, 14 in the second half. Logan Johnson has 27. And Logan Johnson leads the game with 27 points. Mahaney misses both. Williams three, got it. And then a foul. It's a four point game, but 2.6 seconds left. Plains to us, they were finalizing it at 2.8. So Alex Dukas goes to the free throw line. He's a 75% free throw shooter. Nothing but net. Both are good. Last heave by Williams. No good. And St. Mary's holds on. A great effort by Randy Bennett. 